Oh, okay. No, I go to the third. Yeah. Because the first they showed the video from
uh, some cutting edges that are inside the tube, and then by manipulating it out here, you can cause the cutting edge to advance. They actually and you cut out the, the mouth. They actually put stents. Uh, you no, know, they're replacing the valve. They're taking out a valve, a, a disease valve. No, I'm talking about my case. Oh, yes. No, we can put in stents that way. We can do lots of things that way. Um, it's just that the, the technology has advanced so incredibly. Uh, that's why when people say, you know, why can't we get free health care to every uh, poor person in the world who crosses the Mexican border? The answer is you have no idea of what you're asking for. You really don't how expensive healthcare is. You have to understand that uh, nurses invest, you know, to become an LBN, it's, it's like $80,000 investment. You know, I gave an 18-year-old 18, 18 girl like this, you know, eight year, $80,000, and she puts it in the stock market, you know what she'll be worth in 10 years? Whereas after she's become an LBN, she spent all of that money and she has nothing left. So you have to give people an incentive to invest money into their training, otherwise they're going to go into something else, you know. And that, that you know, I mean, to become an RN, it's like 110, 120. A BSN is running you like 150, and most acute hospitals won't hire you unless you're a BSN. If you want to be an ICU nurse, you got to have a master's. You're looking at close to 200,000. You're talking serious <coughs> You know, I, I like Edward Thurston, the senator from Illinois in the 1960s. He used to say, you know, a billion here and a billion there. Pretty soon you're talking about real money. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that you were talking about Camel going to a billion dollars. And that's still a different Yeah. You know, so, you know, you know health care is expensive. And what uh, Maryland is about to have is a very highly technical uh, uh, procedure. You have to know the anatomy like the back of your hand. You can't be looking it up in a book. This is a bad time to be doing that. So, I mean, you know, it's like, I understand what people are saying, but they just don't understand. You know, it's like, uh, I forgot who I was talking to last week, and I said, do you, do you understand that to bring a drug to market in current day America, it's six billion dollars before they sell the first bill. That's just to get it past the FDA. When I was, uh, when I had more hair in my head than this actually black, um, it was only one billion dollars. What's a billion? Oh my goodness. Only one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, today it's costing, six, and this was before Biden inflation, by the way, let me tell you that. Six billion dollars before the first pill is sold. Because you have to pay the botanist who went to the Amazon and found the plant or went to China and and looked at the yew tree and found cisplatina. Then you have to pay the chemist that extracts the, the, the drug. Then you have to uh, pay the biologist that tests it on cells. Uh, you know, uh, I could go on and on and on. Before that pill gets to a human being's mouth, that's a lot of steps. And all those buildings and the labs. I mean, I, I was an undergraduate student. In 1968, I was working in a simple lab doing Stop low. Just the ana analytical equipment alone cost $120,000 in 1968 dollars. And that's just for me to know what it is I'm working on. To actually do the reaction, I needed a stop flow machine, another expensive piece of machinery. And it eats chemicals, it eats material like no tomorrow. It makes my kids look like they were on a diet. You know, it's, I hate to tell you. Technical health is expensive, and there's no way around it. And I'm, I'm not rejoicing in it or anything like that. I'm just saying it's the facts. It's the facts. So let's go up. We're at the bottom of page 101. And uh, um, we had just finished uh, verses 6 in the first part of 7. And I wanted to read you um, something from Zechariah. Uh, uh, seven, Zechariah chapter 11, verse 17. But um, uh, before we do that, we said uh, I wanted to bring your attention to um, to uh, uh, the, the, the comment made at the top of the page where it says that the Antichrist will be injured and he will uh, have his uh, his right arm will be paralyzed and his um, his eye will be damaged and. 
But you understand, John didn't say this in isolation. Zechariah 11, chapter, chapter 11, verse 17. This is Zechariah <coughs> speaking of the false Messiah to come. He says, the sword shall be upon his arm and upon his eye. And his arm shall be dried up and his eye will be utterly darkened. In other words, whatever the assassination attempt on the Antichrist is, we know it will probably be a head wound, and it will most likely uh, darken his eye, or make him blind in that eye. And, if, and as you know, if I hit you in the right place in your head, especially if I hit you on the left side of your head, what happens to your right arm? And to tell you that the guard who gave Zachariah that statement is the guard that designed the body. A, a very brilliant uh, uh, American neurosurgeon uh, by the name of Cushing in the early 1900s did a study of what was called a homunculus of the brain. He did, actually did that at, uh, at Canadian University of Hill, where I, I did my postgraduate work. And if you've ever seen a, a, a homunculus drawn, it, it's a picture. They draw the brain. And then they, they draw a map of a human being on the brain. And you know the brain has a natural cleavage point down the middle. Well, the hips are right at the, the right angle end, And the legs are down there. And they're very small, they're probably like this. And then on the other side that curves over, you have the rest of the body and the hands. The hands take up a huge percentage of the surface compared to the toes. And, and the upper body has tons of, 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 that's all represents the wiring in the brain. Those areas represent the amount of nerve fibers or wires that from the brain go down to the different areas to control them. So it, it gives you an idea that if I hit you bang on the left side, and I hit you on this side, I'm not affecting the legs. The legs are on the inside. Follow what I'm saying? The legs are inside the cleavage plane. It, the arms are on the outside, which means the person who told Zachariah to write that down knew that if I hit you, I will damage your right hand. Get it now? This isn't the God of Muhammad who said that the seven sets and goes into a swamp at sunset and comes out the other side of the earth. No, that's, no, this is a God who knew human anatomy hmm. long before humans started dissecting. Because how would you know that hitting the outside of the head? I'll give you another example. David took a stone and he hit Goliath in the temple. Why is that important? Because the temple bone is the thinnest bone in the skull. You see, yeah, it's the thinnest bone in the skull. If you hit somebody right here, behind the ear, that is the hardest bone in the skull. You're not going to have much impact on that. I mean, I know you don't think much, but yeah, you won't have any impact on me because that's the hardest bone in the skull. But if you hit a person here, and you say, well, why would that? Well, if you throw a stone with enough force, it will fracture that bone. And it will enter into the brain. If so you wanted to kill someone, that is the best place to shoot them. So, yeah, so, <laughs> she said, I'll remember that. <laughs> that was not advice, by the way. <laughs> yeah. um, so, uh, I, I point that out to you. You look at what David did, you look at this, and the God who wrote this Bible, went to anatomy class. And that's probably because he was also the professor. Now, verse 7. Um, and let, me, let me go back up to the previous verse, so we'll have you do this. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy, he being the Antichrist, in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. And I pointed out that the saints in this place are referring to the tribulation saints. In the Bible, there are three sets of people called saints. In the Hebrew Testament, it's referring to the Israelites. In the Christian Testament, it's referring to Christians. But here, during 
tribulation. It's referring to the tribulation saints. And unless you believe that the church is going to go through the, the, the tribulation, it does, which doesn't make sense right, with this, because uh, we know those people who die as a result of it, putting their life in uh, faith in Jesus Christ during the tribulation, they are called saints, and they, want, they are going to be in heaven, albeit in a different uh, position than we will be in. Uh, oh, come on in. Uh, Pastor, let me uh, let me stop the uh, hold on. Let me stop the recording. Okay, yeah. now we're interrupting one more time. No, no, no. But I don't like uh, pictures to appear on. Uh, yeah. we... Yes. Uh, okay. So let me go. Uh, um, so uh, at, at, at this point, as I said in the tribulation. The Antichrist has been injured, and um, the description of his of his uh, of his injury is anatomically correct. Now it says he's in, he's injured by the sword. Um, it's hard for us to you know interpret that uh, what that would mean in modern day armaments, but you know probably he's shot from a distance. It's hard to know what that means though, uh, because let's face it, a gun with a bullet is not much different from a. Um, an arch bow, you know, that, that you fire uh, an arrow with great force from a distance. So guns are really like arrows. That's really all they are. They just, instead of being powered by tight leather strings that are stretched, they are powered by an explosion, a small explosion in a bullet. You know, it's just the nature of things. Um, and it says in verse, continuing in verse 7, and power was given to him the Antichrist, over all kindreds, towns, and uh, towns and, I'm sorry, and, and nations, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. The word that's translated dwell there means to be at home with. And um, it, it's really referring to those who are comfortable with the world system, the system that we have, uh, whose names are not written in the book of life. Uh, there are different ways of interpreting this, but the way Gordon has interpreted it, and I've already told you what you can do with my opinion, in case you don't, you don't know what to do, is that I think from the moment we are born, our names are written into the Book of Life. And as we reject Christ, because Jesus said the only unforgivable sin is to die without accepting him for who he is. He is who he said he is, God in the flesh. And so if you die without doing that, then your name is lodged out, is taken out of the book of life. But I see everyone as having a chance to come to Jesus Christ, everyone. He said, well, what if you're a young Black, female, Hispanic, trisexual, transgender, cross-dressing, Muslim, or Maphrodite. You have a chance to come to Christ. You do. God loves you. You do He said it. Can you say that again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <They're> really fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, no. I don't hate the Muslims at all. This class prayed for a Muslim to be healed, and he was healed. God heard our prayer, and he was healed, and he was amazed that God answers the prayer of Christians. Because to him, how does this deal with Christians? No. We are to pray for them because they have been misled. That's what we have to do. And Bruce can tell you more about that than I can. Uh, no, we are not to hate them at all, not at all. Um, and uh, and of, uh, of, in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation uh, of the world. In the King James Version, it says slain from, from, notice the, the preposition, the foundation of the earth. And I think that's because in King James English in 1611, the word from had a slightly different uh, and broader meaning than it does today. Um, a better translation into modern English would be before 
the foundation of the earth. So I, I don't think the King James is wrong. It's just that you have to remember the English language has changed tremendously in the last 500 years. Uh, um, now, uh, you know, and I, I put in a little note that it kind of relates to my own my own experience. You know, I used to think when I was a young boy that you know Christ was a wonderful person. If only he had lived. You know, think of all the good he could have done. No, no, he did the best, not just good, the best, when he offered up his life willingly. You see, I thought Jesus shame he died. No. <laughs> No, no, no. That question tells me something about my teenage brain. Not very good. Um, verse 9 again. If any man have an heir, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And he that killed with the sword shall be killed with the sword. Um, John is, is really telling us here a fundamental truth. He's saying, if you're the one imprisoning those that believe in Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ said that would happen to his followers. He said, you will be persecuted. He said, that person will be led into captivity. If you're the one that's marching people to their death, you the, the same faith of which you if you're the one killing with the sword. And he said that Jesus said this in, 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 in a slightly different way. If you if you kill with the sword, you yourself will be killed by the sword. So uh, you know violence is to be avoided at, at all costs. You know, but sometimes as I've said to you before, you just there's just no way around it. You know, my my, my cousins in England you know, who I also don't get along with them. Remember when they're like, which cousins do you get along with? You don't like your American cousins and you don't like the British cousins. <laughs> you know, what sounds, he says, why is it uh, uh, um, uh, Americans like guns? I said, probably because they don't trust the government. And, and they're, they're like, you see, the Europeans have a totally different idea. They trust the government completely and explicitly and totally. And, and so like, like, why do you need a gun? I personally am not bothered if any of you want to own a gun. I don't own a gun. I don't plan on ever buying one. My attitude is if God wants me dead, I'm going to die. And if he wants me to live, you couldn't kill me. So I'm not worried about it. Do you want to own a howitzer, a Sherman tank? Knock yourself out, my friend. Don't you knock yourself out. I don't care. <laughs> you, want, you want to prove the expenditure. <laughs> She's not signing the check. <laughs> So, you know, I personally don't care about those things. You want to know again that you're a business, but I know, you know. Um, it, uh, and going on to verse 10, it says, and here is the patience and faith of the saints. Do uh, you realize that we are blessed because we know the end of the story. We are reading the end of the story. So we know the end of the story. We're not like the people before who weren't sure how the Messiah will come in, in what form and so on. No, we know the, the, the end of the story. You know, I know a lot of people that read the book of Revelation and their main goal is to figure out what is the mark of the beast and who is the Antichrist? You know, I mean, when Mahomet came on the scene, everyone thought he was the Antichrist. And they even Time Magazine had a picture of him walking on water. Do you remember that, that, that Time Magazine cover? Yeah, you can look it up. I'm not on that time magazine cover. He's walking on water. The implication is clear, <laughs> of course. I know I regret to tell you that Macron is not the Messiah. He, um, he this week, grudgingly, very grudgingly, congratulated uh, President Trump, uh, President elect Trump, uh, uh, and um, uh, he said, well, you know, we'll, we'll do business with anybody. Well, you can see that the, just the way, and unfortunately, I, I can speak French, so I'm able to translate what he was saying. You can, the choice of words, and, the, and just as many of you didn't understand French, the, his mannerism, you can see he didn't like it. He did not like it. Now, um, 
And so, uh, you know, I don't think he is. And I, here, here's my advice to you. Stop trying to figure out the mark of the beast, number one. And I'll give you some reasons in a minute. And number two, I would appreciate it greatly if you'd stop looking for Antichrist and start looking for Jesus Christ. That's mm -hmm. true. I don't care who's the Antichrist. I don't think we will be around to, to greet him. So quit worrying about who is the Antichrist. Uh, you know, um, you know, what exactly is, is the mark of the beast? I, I, I don't know. If you go back in the Bible, you will notice that um, it, it actually says he will cause them to have a mark on their forehead and on, on, on their hand. I think it's in Deuteronomy 7, uh, I'm trying to think. I, I know it's in, in, in Deuteronomy, um, yeah, 6, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy, and, and, uh, I think it's 6. It says, uh, and I, I've actually put the provision of that here. And this is God giving instructions to the Israelites. And remember, the Antichrist is going to mimic the Christ so that they, he would be uh, accepted as the Messiah. <clears throat> Listen to what God says. He's giving instructions to the Israelites. He says, and you, the Israelites, shall bind them, uh, uh, a, a, a little symbol, on your hand, or put the frontlets between your eyes. Have you ever seen Orthodox Jews with a little thing on their hand? Yeah. They are, they are obeying this instruction <coughs> in Deuteronomy 6. They're obeying it. Because God says, this is how you will be marked by me. So what does the Antichrist do? He mimics this. Now you get it? Yeah. Whatever the mark is, it's going to be something that he wants you to display here or here. And, and I'm not referring to an Apple Watch, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to, he wants you to display it so that people will know that you support the Antichrist. You know, and um, that is not the, 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 the whole idea. Um, uh, this illustrates, uh, actually, this verse illustrates a couple of things. It's called. Um, the best book for you to use to interpret the Bible is the Bible. Go back and look, and you will see where, and also, of course, it, it, it illustrates something about the principle of first mention. When is the word mark first used in the Bible? It's used in the book of Genesis. It has to do with Cain complaining to God. He says, now, you know, I killed my brother, now everybody hates me. Gee, I feel so bad for you, you know. He says, and now they're going to kill me. Everybody's out to get me. And God says, okay, I will put a mark on you that no one will slay you. So that's the first time the word mark is, is used. How exactly that relates to the, uh, the mark of the beast, I honestly don't know. I, I think this is complex, and I think God deliberately left this day. Now, many people think that it's going to be some sort of a microchip that is inserted under the skin by a simple injection um, in the arm or in, 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 uh, on, on the forehead. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. And to quote that great American theologian, frankly, my dear. <laughs> yes. Uh, verse 18. Here is wisdom. <laughs> And let him that have understanding count the number of uh, Oh yes, yes, I'm sorry. I'm glad one of us is paying attention. And I'm so glad it's you. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. number? Uh, yes, no, I skipped the page. I'm sorry. Um, it, it, it's verse, uh, verse 11. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, well, actually, let me go up here. Yeah, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Uh, now, it's interesting that this person it says, the first beast came out of the roaring sea. This second beast comes from the earth. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can interpret this. This is one of the reasons that 
I subscribe, and I, and I have to tell you, this is controversial, so you don't have to believe me on this, and you're welcome to form your own opinion. Um, I suspect that the second beast, the false prophet, is probably a Jew, for a multiplicity of reasons. Um, yeah, you know, as you know now, 70% of the Jews, both in Israel and at large in the diaspora, are secular. I don't know if you're aware of that. You tend to think that every Jew is, is an Orthodox or Orthodox. No, no. Far from it. Um, Tel Aviv is the gay capital of not only of Israel, but a lot of Arab gays move to Israel. Guess why? Right. Right. And they are accepted. You know, um, because you're not persecuted in Israel for being homosexual, even though their their the religious laws are uh, you know are against it, you're not persecuted for it. Uh, which in our lesson, we are not here to persecute anybody. You see, we uh, Christians have this this idea. You know, God, you love him, I'll judge him. No, 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 no. no. You, you you read that backwards. God is saying. You love them, and God will judge them. But we like to say, no, 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 God, no, 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 I can't love them. You love them. And, you know, only a mother can love their brother. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Uh, uh, do you think that Christians of today uh, are very judgmental like that? Like we're. Yes, I, I think so. I think so. Um, I, you know, I, um, uh, well, okay, <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll give you, uh, uh, I'll, give, I'll give you an idea. So, you know, we might hear of someone doing something that may not be right, um, and we have already uh, uh, judged them, sentenced them, and executed the sentence. Um, we, are, we don't know the whole story. None of us knows the whole story as to why someone. Now, I'm, that's not saying we are not to discern. You know, obviously, if someone is, um, uh, say, an abortionist, uh, we cannot tell him that he's doing a wonderful job and he's going to heaven. No, we can't tell him that. That would be our right line. We are still to have a love in our heart for that person. There have been a number of abortionists who have moved away from the profession and have become born again Christians. So you don't know who is going to respond to the message of the Lord. You don't know that. So I want you to love them, no matter what. I want you to love them. You say, it's hard to love some of those people. You know what? I think every single wife on the planet could save her a husband. Only your mother could love you. Right? So, you know, I, 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 I hear what you're saying, and I mean, I think you have a wonderful view of human beings, you know, one of your redeeming graces. Uh, but I think, yes, I think as Christians, and I'm speaking now of Christians, I think we're too quick to judge. I understand that there, 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 there is a, when, when we use the word judge in, 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 in the Bible, it means to pronounce sentence. You are guilty and you're going to hang by your neck until you, until you die. That's pronouncing sentence. When it says in the, in the Bible that, um, uh, that you are, con uh, the Holy Spirit will convict you, that means he's telling you that you're guilty. He's telling you that you're guilty. Not a judge that he's telling you you're guilty of sin. <coughs> we have uh, a number of, of words that convey that meaning, but for us it's more a matter of, like for example, let me give you another example. When it says God chastens the ones he loves, that word is better translated as child training. Not chastening, but we tend to think chastening means that your dad takes out a, a whip and he's as Dave used to say, he was, he's taking the, um, the uh, Board of Education to the seat of understanding. 
that, 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 that's not what the word chastening means in, in the original language. It means he is, uh, he is training up the child. Okay. Can the training be harsh? Yeah. yeah. Talk to Joe sometime when you have, have a chance. Yeah. So, yes. Are we are at that point? Uh, how are we? Yes, okay, so, you know. Uh, so now, next week uh, um, uh, is uh, the today's the 10th, right? And so, yeah, no, so it's not next week, it's two weeks from next week. Uh, I will be, you know, uh, Bruce will be writing the class. I will be here next week, and then after that, uh, it will be Sunday before the Thanksgiving week, and Bruce will have that class. As, uh, as is our tradition, we do not have whole classes on Thanksgiving Sunday, the Sunday after the Thanksgiving holiday, because a lot of people have family, and, and you know, you're probably taking family to the airport and things like that. So we do not hold class traditionally on uh, certain days. One of them is the Sunday after Thanksgiving, and another one is uh, the Sunday, uh, you know, uh, after Christmas. Uh, so, uh, but just for your knowledge, I will be here next week, and then the, the, the following week, Bruce will take over. I believe that week um, they'll be bringing um, um, uh, Patrick and, uh, and, and Shirley. Um, I don't know if they want to come to this class. It's already well known in this class. I, I haven't discussed that yet with Pastor Ron. So, um, just to uh, quickly bring you up to date with Israel, the, um, the uh, Ayatollah has commissioned uh, the Ayatollah has bluntly said on more than one occasion, but he's been saying it more recently, that there has to be a leap, an intelligence leap in his organization, because Israel knows too much. <laughs> How could Israel have known the precise apartment that uh, the head of Hamas was staying in, in a very secure area? It would be like um, living in a, a, you know, like living in the White House and someone fires a shot into one window and kills how would you know that? And how did you know he was going to be there at that time? So he is very suspicious that there is a leak in his, in, in his uh, upper echelons. And he has not commissioned his CIA or his uh, the Revolutionary Guards to investigate. He has commissioned his son, who is a cleric, no military experience, no intelligence experience. You say, well, why would he do that? And the answer is he can't trust. Mm. Other than his son, you can't trust anyone. So they are investigating the leak, and I, I don't think it will do them any good. You know, uh, Ron has asked me, uh, where does Israel get all this intelligence? And the answer is, no, it's not James Bond. It's God. Mm -hmm. He arranges things. <coughs> People are in the right place to hear information. Because their, their intelligence supersedes, in my opinion, human ability. The intelligence gathering the supersedes that. Um, we are now in a, 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 a pretty beside the Ayatollah's problems. Uh, Israel, uh, needless to say, if 70% of the people in Israel wanted Trump to win, um, uh, even in Tel Aviv, which is like far left liberal leaning, I mean, which tells you something, October 7th of last year changed everything. And, uh, and, and so even the liberals, Israel um, recognized the dangers. Interesting things have happened. Uh, Hamas all of a sudden wants to negotiate peace since Donald Trump was elected. The problem with that is that they haven't changed their demands one bit since the October 31st of 2023, which is we want Israel to stop the war and permanent ceasefire, get out of gas, or give us billions of dollars to rebuild, which you know will also go to my arm. As well, uh, and, uh, and when they say rebuild, they mean rebuild the tunnels, not the buildings, the tunnels. And uh, uh, and there are several things wrong with their proposals. Uh, did you notice uh, what they were going to give to Israel in return for all of this? You didn't hear that. That's because they don't plan on giving Israel anything in return for all, all those concessions. The other thing is that they are. Uh, uh, yet you didn't hear in their proposals, 
Did you hear anything about the hostages? Did I mention the word hostages? No. no. Because they are not interested in releasing the hostages. So they want everything to go back to the way it was on October 6th, and they get to keep the hostages. Well, needless to say, of course, I think you know what Netanyahu's response to that would be. Yeah, you know, you can take a hike. And uh, uh, the, so the, the talks are going nowhere. And as a result of that, Qatar, uh, which has been the home of Hamas and has been supporting them um, in order to keep them from doing terrorist acts in Qatar, it's, you know, it's the old Al Capone. You know, you need to pay me money so I can protect you from guys like me that are bad. You know, mm. uh, it worked in the 1930s. <laughs> guess what? It's working in the 2030s too. Uh, so Qatar basically has told Hamas to get out of Qatar because they realize that they, they're not serious about negotiating. And Donald Trump, in his conversation with the, uh, with the emir of uh, Qatar, reminded him that there's an American base in Qatar that protected Qatar from Saddam Hussein. And Donald Trump reminded him that why am I doing this for you again? Are you been looking for something? Like, why am I doing this for you? And so I think he got the message loud and clear. Biden might be happy with you negotiating everything in favor of Hamas, but I'm not. And you are going to have to change. Otherwise, I'm pulling the American troops out. You can defend yourself. You got enough money. Um, so things have started to happen. I, I, it, it is said that Netanyahu had a 20 minute conversation with him. I am sure they discuss future plans. Uh, and as I said, if um, Donald Trump uh, wins the election, most likely uh, Iran's nuclear program will probably get eliminated. They've already said, the, I told what I said, he is going to speed up the nuclear <laughs> weapons program. The first time any Iranian official has mentioned the word nuclear weapons right next to each other. So if you had any doubts before that they were building nuclear weapons as opposed to building a nuclear reactor to generate electricity, those thoughts should disappear from your mind because he clearly said, we are going to speed up our nuclear weapons program and we are going to expedite the testing of a nuclear bomb. Wow, that's true. So I think you know what Netanyahu and uh, and Donald Trump would must be talking about in 20 minutes. It wasn't how's the wife, how's the kids? No, I don't think so. Let's go, yes, then. I'm sorry, what, what's your best guess on how many hostages are still alive? Uh, uh, I think it's about 110, I think, uh, people are unaccounted for. And we, uh, the Israeli government uh, has definitive proof that 38 of them are dead based on blood, an analysis of blood found um, uh, in, in various houses uh, that the Israeli uh, uh, army has um, gone through. So we know for with great certainty that 38 of them are dead. The amount of blood that was on the scene would make it very difficult for them to still be alive in, the, in, in, in that sort of a garden. Um, the uh, Israeli government thinks up to 50 may be dead. So wow. We don't know. And although the, in the remember the hostages are being held by private citizens who are being paid eighteen dollars a month, which is a, a two dollars more than the average salary in, in Gaza, so they're being paid well to, to safeguard the, these hostages. And Israel has said, "You turn over the hostage to us. You tell an Israeli soldier where they are. Turn him over to an Israeli soldier. You will not be prosecuted." And if you want to get out of Gaza, we'll get you out of Gaza. And there will be a reward to you. And not a single person has accepted the offer. No, no? So, we'll see. Well, I'm glad President Trump won. But whatever he did, I'm so happy. Yeah, <laughs> so no, I think it's the, Continue it's, praying for him, for his family. Well, I think it's great for Israel. Yes. That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the... And, you know, now Israel has someone that will not share information with the Ayatollah. Uh, you know, um, I, I, I think that, that, that's my approach. I, I think we're at it. We're at the time for that. Yeah. But yeah, and, you know, as I said, everything concerns Israel. You say, well, Courtney, I'm awfully focused on Israel. 
Now, the Bible is our holy focus on Israel. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your incredible word. There's no one that has even come close to the accuracy that you have. No one that knows the future. No one that can tell us how we are to come to you, how we are to relate to you, and how we are going to take your word, your gospel, to the people you bring across our path. This is, this is so, so vital and so critical that we share the life-giving word of the gospel. The people who have been misled, people who have been lied to, people who think they are doing your work, when in reality, they are simply exercising an ancient human right and killing, which is not. Help us, Lord, to reach those people you bring across our path. Help us, Lord, to love them. It's not easy. Help us, Lord, to love them. And I ask these things, Lord, and I ask according to your perfect will, and I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for keeping me out of time. I thought you were going to, to Taiwan. Oh, I see. Okay. You'll be back now? Oh, yeah. Well, I thought we now be back. Yes. Yeah. Well, travel mercies, so we will... We will pray for travel mercies. We will. Yeah. Oh, you. 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 Oh